Um, okay, we, um, for, the, for the first time this year, I think you heard at the beginning, we're, we're on YouTube. And uh, we've also opened up, because we're modern, you know, and we're part of a, a, a social media savvy environment. Um, we've invited a couple of questions from Twitter. Um, oh, we will from you in a minute too, settle, settle. Um, and Ian Rowe on Twitter asks, and I think it's relevant to what we've seen this summer, do you see sledging as a problem in the game today? Or is it no worse than when you played? Um, right, sledging. Yeah, I think you've given the lecture. I think you should have first crack. Wouldn't know much about sledging myself. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you do, what, what, sledging, you target the person you think you can affect. And I'll just think back to Perth in Australia when uh, Warney came on and Ian Bell was still very much a youngster in his career, started his career, and the Shermanator came out. And the Shermanator, and I could see Belly trying to work out what's the Shermanator, and he's thinking, and he'd be going home that night and he'd be Googling it, trying to find out what the Shermanator was. And that's an example of sledging. But that's banter. That's, that's not ba sledging. Well, that, but no, but I think the thing is, Mucky, that the real sledging, you only ever target the person you can affect. So if I was playing against Sunil, well, he never lasted that long. But if I was playing... <laughs> <laughs> he was one he, of the greats. He'll keep, he'll keep. He's one of the greats. But, uh, no, but when you... When you if I was playing against Viv Richards or uh, Alan Border, um, I, I wouldn't say anything to him. You just don't say anything to him. You don't want to wake him up. <laughs> I was seriously hoping they were still thinking about the dinner they had last night, or in Viv's case, where he'd been last night. Um, and I was hoping they were on that uh, thought pattern and not about the game of cricket. So don't say anything. Leave them. You know, hopefully they'll did, stay asleep. Did, did you get verbal as much when, when you, I mean, I'm, I'm talking unpleasant stuff. Not, I'm, not, I'm not talking um, banter, because they seem to me to be different things. No, never. I think, uh, I, I can't say, say never. Uh, my last uh, series in Australia, I did uh, get from, uh, from somebody who was making his debut. And I was playing probably my hundred and something tests, and this guy making his debut and he, you know, he uh, sledged me. And when you say sledge, uh, wasn't quite banter. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's a mixed crowd, so I can't go into details. <laughs> but uh, that was the first time. And I actually, frankly, I was staggered. Uh, I was staggered because, you know, he just stood there and he said uh, something to me and, uh, and I was like, I mean, what's going on? Um, when you played against Pakistan, there was, a, there was abuse. There was no, that, that wasn't sledging, that was downright abuse. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I suppose the Indian players also gave it back uh, to the Pakistanis. Uh, so, so that's so India Pakistan because of the intensity. Yes, did lead to some unpleasant situations. That it right downright abuse. <laughs> so, I mean, no, no unpleasant situation. Um, I understand this is a difficult subject for you, given you were part of the England team at Trent Bridge. But without pushing you on either Jimmy or any particular instance, what interests me is whether. In your time in the game, you've seen any change of emphasis, whether what, we, what I like to call banter uh, has become any worse or indeed any nastier? Absolutely not. As the great man has just said, downright abuse. <laughs> and that was however many years ago. Um, the thing about sledging is it does go on. It, it happens. Um, and I've been on the receiving. No one team is worse than any other. I've been on the receiving end from Australians, South Africans, Indians, Kiwis, the lot, and I've also heard them get it. Um, well, I think the thing that has changed is, so we're on YouTube now, we're answering questions from Twitter, there's stump mics, um, we, you're under um, the spotlight all of the time. So these things, I think, get out far more easily. And become exaggerated. And become exaggerated massively, which, which is wrong. Because on the one hand, yes, sledging does go on and it does happen. I don't think it's right that it gets out. It stays on the pitch. And that's it can't be it right. Works. It happened. Here we are at the Spirit of Cricket lecture. <laughs> we can't be advocating. I mean, you, 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 I know you're I'm not, not advocating. Not no, you're not. You're not. No, you're not. But, but it can't be right for cricket or for sport at large. No, but it's always gone on and it's not going to change. But there are ways of dealing with it. And, and that's what, uh, one of the things that we used to do in, our, in the older days. I hate to say that. I'm not going to do, fall into that trap. But... Um, we used to police the game a bit ourselves. 
And that is that you used to have a beer at the end of the day. If we, the Aussies have been in the field, or the Kiwis, or we even got the Indian boys, you know, we used to have a drink with those guys. It, you'd go in at the end of the day, and if there was a problem on the field, you addressed it in the dressing room and sorted it out. So it didn't need a match referee. It didn't need all the publicity. It was just done and dusted, more often than not. And uh, I think players respected each other for that. And I thought, you're out of order today. What was that all about? Oh, well, you know, sorry, had a bad day. And that was the end of it. W would you like to see umpires come down harder on players and match referees? No, but I'd like to see more of what Ian's talking about. Self-policing. <laughs> I don't know whether, whether it happens now, but uh, I can tell you, Mike's here. On the, on the Sunday of, of the Oval Test match, Mike, uh, the England captain, invited, uh, I think, half a dozen of our players uh, to his home uh, for, for a meal. I don't know whether that would happen now, uh, when, it, when in England and India are playing, would, whether that would leave aside inviting them home, inviting the, you know, the opposition out for dinner. I mean, Beefy and I, just, when we were playing against each other, we, we went out for a, for a meal. Yeah. I mean, it didn't take his intensity away when he, when he was playing against me the next right. morning. And I think that is, that is how it should be, because at the moment, you, you, even today, now you see, is when a batsman scores a 50 or a 100, the fielders hardly ever clap. It's almost as if saying, oh, clapping uh, uh, somebody getting a 50 or a 100 is going to take your intensity away. I mean, that's not the way I, I believe cricket should be played. I mean, somebody plays well. I mean, you see that in tennis. Djokovic, when, he, when, some, when his opponent uh, plays a great shot, he, he claps. It doesn't take anything away from his game. I think, if, I think if you have something like that, I think it'll make the game better. And just to go on that subject again, the last two test matches, after the decision of the match referee or the commissioner came out, not a word was said between England and India. England won handsomely. So if that can happen without you know, any talking being done, I don't see why it can't carry on. Because quite frankly, whatever you're saying, it is watched on television, it sets a bad example for the youngsters. Whether you're abusing, whether, whether you're not abusing, it sets a bad example. And the only talking that should happen is by the bat and by the ball. That's my firm view. Okay. <laughs> move on, move on. No, I just think it's, it's really important to, to players. The one thing I used to enjoy when I went on tour was getting out there and understanding the country I was in. When I'm in India, I disappear and sit in the back of elephants with my cameras chasing tigers, uh, which is fantastic. I love, and Kath comes with me. And you get out and you meet the people, the rural people of the countries. And I actually visit more parts of India than Sonny's ever seen. And, he's, <laughs> and he'll admit that. And it's the same when I go to New Zealand. I explore, and I enjoy that. And I think that helps if you start to understand the country you're in and appreciate it. There's some magnificent places out there, but sitting in a room playing with an Xbox doesn't do a lot for me. Oh, that's a tre tremendous diversion from the subject. Yeah, well, well, I, well I know what I'm saying. Is no, I, I hear what you're saying, embrace the culture and yeah. therefore you have a better relationship yeah. with the opposition.